All right. All right, good evening, everyone. I call the city council meeting for uh, November 10th to order. So we'll have a moment of silence to start for whatever you're thinking about or whatever concerns you have. Thank you. Alderman Dunn, if you'd be kind enough to lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Brian, our city clerk, if you'd please call the roll for tonight. Dunn. Here. Dorman. Here. McGinnis? Here. Lee? Here. Grip? Here. Condon? Here. Dickman? Here. Jobgen? And Ambrose? Here. Eight present, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Brian. So, good evening, everyone. As we begin, begin the meeting of the City Council, I'd again like to welcome everybody in attendance and anybody who's viewing us through any particular electronic or computer device. We respectfully welcome your comments and opinions. But please keep in mind as you share your thoughts, you're sharing them with your fellow Davenporters and anybody throughout the region. We are happy you're participating in your city government and ask that your participation please reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport a great place for everybody. If you have a cell phone, um, please, especially for the folks in here, if you put it on silent or turn it off simply so it doesn't get in the way of someone talking. If you want to address the council, please come to the podium, the microphone's above you. Um, Please give your name, ward, or address, and if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. Um, when addressing a council, please talk to us as a body as, and not anybody particular or any individual. We'll be respectful of you. Please be respectful of everyone, and good to see everyone. So, uh, will an alderman please move approval of the city council meeting minutes for October 27th? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Ms. Corey Spiegel, our city administrator, update for this evening. Just a reminder that city facilities will be closed tomorrow on observation of Veterans Day. Under that, Veterans Day. All right. And then will an alderman please move approval of the report of the Committee of the Whole for November 3rd? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Very good. And then moving on to the fun part of the evening, we have uh, one presentation for this evening, our Halloween parade. So... Um, we've been doing it, and last year was a little smaller, but uh, this one was kind of cool and kind of big because it was the first night one since 2014, and by uh, seeing all the people that both attended the parade as participants and people that attended trying to receive some of the candy, it looked like quite uh, a nice thing. So uh, 61 entries, um, a wonderful mix of youth groups, businesses, school-based organizations, nonprofits, and city departments. Um, special thank you to our volunteers from Noon Op Optimus, Mid-American Energy, our police, our city staff, and then I want to take a special privilege and um, if everybody would give applause to our good friend Tiffany Thorndike and her team for, for kind of putting this together. <laughs> so a wonderful evening, and I'll uh, meet her at the podium, and uh, we'll give out some awards for... The Halloween parade, and as that happens, you'll be able to watch some, I guess, pictures, videos on the little screen there. All right, so hello everyone, thanks for coming. So, no particular order, otherwise, uh, we'll start with the mayor's trophy, uh, Davenport Fire Department. I love that. Uh, that's kind of cool, so uh, thank you. Do you want to do this? Yep. There you go, hold that. Perfect. One, two, three. I do one on my phone as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, we're good. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Thank you. Woo. All right. Next one, best youth group, Assumption High School Marching Band. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And who wants to have this? Yeah, there you go. Good job. Thank you. 
<laughs> Two claps is good, yeah? Best float, big brothers, big sisters. Best costume, MS Home Improvement. All y'all come up. Cool, cool. All right, everybody. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, who wants? Do you want to do a couple of rows? A couple of rows here. Yeah. Up here. Here you go. Uh, All right, everybody look this way. Okay. Squeeze together. You got this? If they can't see the camera, they can't see you. Faces group up just a little bit. Oh, perfect. Okay, ready? Go, boom. One, two, three. Nice job. Thank you. Best dancing unit, Artistic Intensity Dance Company. Best City Department, Danport Park and Recreation. City costume, Danport City Council. <laughs> Y'all three the It's up to you. Best float, first runner up, Fred's towing. Another round of applause for everyone. Thank you very much. So we'll pause a second if you'd like to go. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay for the meeting, but we'll pause in case you don't want to.
Depends on the night. Okay, we'll carry on with, with Dale. So, uh, <laughs> representing, the, representing the citizens of Davenport. Is, thank you. So, let me get my head back in the game here. Okay, petitions and communication. I just want to say one thing. Um, uh, Ms. Spiegel said it. Uh, city's off kind of for Veterans Day. So, um, the parade tomorrow, Veterans Day parade, kicks off at Western and 4th um, at 10 a.m. And then there's a ceremony after that uh, right at the flag uh, poles by the courthouse. So, I'd encourage everybody, is, if, you, if you're able, to go to that or go to some ceremony. Uh, the American Legion from 11 to 1 is having a lunch. Uh, and then the Rock Island Arsenal at 1 o'clock is having a ceremony at Shelter 2. So, and there's other activities around the Quad Cities, but... Um, if you could attend, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. So Veterans Day Parade, uh, 10 a.m. And now I see Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to tell two stories. One is um, Bob and I drove up to central Minnesota and spent a couple of days up there. And then we drove to Denver because I was doing some work out there. Um, and when we do, we stay in bed and breakfast at our uh, Airbnb so that we can cook ourselves and don't have to go out to restaurants. Um, and it was interesting because there were so many precautions being taken for COVID in both places and people were wearing masks outside um, in Rochester and Denver. Um, and then I uh, tuned into our meeting, the live stream, and it was amazing. I, it was like surreal there were so few masks here. So having been in two different places in two different parts of the country in a week and a half, and then uh, looking at our live stream, almost no masks. So it was odd. And then this weekend, we went to the symphony on Saturday. And of course, I sit in the balcony, so I can only speak for the balcony. But it was probably 90%, 95% masked. And then the next night, I went to the Broadway play, and it was like, five to 10% masked in the same place, one night later, different crowd. Um, and that's odd for me. We actually had to go find a place where there weren't people standing up and talking over us with no masks on. So we had to take a um, poorer seat because of that, but it was worth it. And I just, in today's paper, um, and we, of course we have better data for Rock Island, but, um, you know, they're, they're basically saying that <clears throat> the latest COVID-19 reports from the Iowa Department of Public Health and the Rock Island Health Department and the U.S. Centers for Disease um, Control painted a discouraging picture of the state of the virus in the Quad Cities. For Rock Island, which tends to have better information and, of course, better um, um, safety precautions being taken, it said... Um, 63% of the 91 men and women under the age of 40 comprised the 143 cases. 60, almost 64% were under the age of 40. So it's no longer old people like me that are most at risk. Um, their positivity rate is 2% higher just in a week. And um, for Iowa, it said the Iowa side was not much better. Um, and... Uh, a key thing that I wanted to point out was Rock Island reported that 30 of the new infections were boys and girls younger than 13, accounting for almost 21% of the cases. And that's in Rock Island, and we don't have that data for Iowa, but I suspect because we're taking fewer precautions, the number's a lot higher. Uh, you can get vaccines. They're, they're very available. Our positivity rate is 8% which is much higher than Rock Island's and 2% higher than it was a week ago. So I'm just concerned that we're not taking the precautions in the Quad Cities, well, particularly on this side of the river, and including in our public buildings. Um, I know the county is, has a mask mandate and um, in, in their facilities, and I think it's really important that we recognize that there's some realities out there. And this virus is not over. And the Delta is a lot more infectious. And you can have it and spread it and not know it. And 
It's about eight percent. Um, if you have it, you uh, with the Delta, you can spread it to about eight different people. That's what the R naught is for the Delta variant versus the original, which was three. You spread it to three. It's that much more infectious. I just wanted to bring that information up, and hopefully it gives us pause on the way we're um, behaving on the Iowa side of the Quad Cities. Thank you. Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just uh, again a reminder that third ward meeting will be a sneak peek tour of the, um, the um, rehab at the call building, which is at Ripley and West Third Street. And that's going to be on Saturday, November 13th, 11 a.m. Gather at the um, front door, which is under the Capitol Theater marquee. Uh, we'll be looking at, um, it's still certainly a constru under construction, uh, work being done, but we're going to hopefully see a couple of finished units and we'll take a peek into the Capitol Theater and um, the developer Chris Ailes will be our guide. So this is uh, an ongoing rehab that started, I think, a couple of years ago and the planning for it much before that long-awaited use of a building that's been empty, a beautiful, iconic building um, and uh, in Third Ward, proudly in Third Ward, of course. Um, so um, um, Chris has been very gracious to do this with us before in some of the buildings he's done, and it's always nice to see these things happen. So please join us. If you're not a Third Warder, we'll make you one an honorary one for the day um, and join us on um, uh, Saturday, November 13th, 11 a.m. at the Call Building. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Your Honor. First off, I'm thankful we live in a free state of Iowa where we don't have heavy-handed government dictating what we're supposed to be doing. And also the city of Davenport, you know, uh, our COVID will be with us forever. So learn to live with it. I want to thank Nicole and Clay. That was a great presentation yesterday on the flood study. It was very, very thorough and comprehensive. And uh, is, is Clay still here? Clay, Washington Street has a lot of work still going on north of Locust. Is that the city or is that the water company? Because it's turning into a mess. And with snow coming up, you know, we got to wrap that up. Clay Merritt, Public Works, um, I believe is uh, private utilities, but let me check on that for you. I'm not aware of a city project occurring in that right instance. It, but, but I'll make sure it's whoever, been a mess it is, for quite a while. Yes, and sir. the neighbors are, they've just about had it. And Marquette Street, it looks beautiful. When will it be completed? When is it going to be completely open? I believe it is, I'm trying to think, uh, next, I think the 15th. I think it's coming right around either the, later this week or the very beginning of next week. All right. Mm -hmm. And this is, thanks, Clay. Thank and you. Corey, we're going on four months and uh, there's been no change at Riverview Park. A lot of people are concerned, you know, with fall, it's beautiful. A lot of people are missing that incredible view. So maybe next week you can give a, uh, update on what's happening up there, when the park's going to be reopened. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman McConnell. Thank you, Your Honor. We don't have a big audience today, so I might be talking to my colleagues as much as the public, but I did want to um, applaud Davenport for, uh, for that Halloween parade. Sometimes when you um, can see where you're trying to go, you can sometimes become discouraged and a bit of a curmudgeon. And I have to be honest, uh, the Halloween parade one has been a tricky one in the past. It, it, one of the greatest strengths of the Quad Cities is also sometimes our weak, weakness. It's clumsy sometimes, and there's multiple parades going on in the community on the same holiday. Um, but the crowd that showed up downtown uh, didn't just blow my socks off. It blew a lot of people that I talked to socks off. And um, so what I have come to say is that it's a downtown if we can keep it. And sometimes uh, there's some question internally as to when has the downtown finally arrived and when can we stop talking about the downtown. Um, but a all of the great things that we have down there, we have to continue to support it and, and watch it grow. So uh, in two weeks, I think, we have the Festival of Trees Parade. Um, so just as we come into the colder weather, remember Festival of Trees Parade, Chris Kindlemart, Extravaganza, just to 
um, think of a few. We have the holiday shopping season coming up. So just uh, please continue to support our, our local businesses and specifically, uh, as I'm speaking about right now, the downtown. There's over 100 apartments uh, that should be opening up downtown in, in the coming months. So in the spring, sometimes it's really uh, fun to watch the uh, snow thaw and, and see what um, next generation of growth we have in the downtown. So I'm really looking forward to next spring. And uh, again, uh, congratulations to the citizens of downtown for a great parade. And um, let's, let's, um, let's keep supporting uh, the momentum down there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Very good. All right, moving on to uh, individual approval items on the discussion agenda. We have one. Uh, it's a first consideration of an ordinance adding chapter, thir adding chapter 13.40 to the Davenport Municipal Code entitled Public Water Supply Well Protection. Is there any public with comment? Move to consideration. Okay, there's a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion from my colleagues? Alderwoman McGinnis. Um, yes, I, uh, I wanted to... Um, to speak to this, is there anybody tonight here from utility requesting this that can talk to us about why we're looking for what was one is now seven? Good evening, Council. Brad Nielsen, Ward 6, Vice President of Operations for Iowa American Water. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. That is a water project on that Washington Street, a very long, very complicated, very important project. We are pushing very hard to get it wrapped up. And with respect to the, uh, the reason that I'm here, I'm here to outline at a high level the water well strategy uh, around the project that we are putting in front of or has been put in front of the council. Um, and to give you a little perspective, I want to go through the history of this project. In 2019, we conducted a risk and resilience analysis of our water system here in the Iowa Quad Cities. That was in association with our comprehensive planning studies. In that study, one risk was identified that the Mississippi River is our sole source of water supply for the area. And while the source is very reliable, and it would be an issue if there were a series of unlikely circumstances would occur, we would not have a backup source of supply if that did occur. We discussed multiple strategies at that point in time, um, several that we decided were not ad as advantageous as implementing a groundwater well as a supplemental source of supply to the Mississippi. So we looked at various internal sites at that point in time. A lot of strategies were investigated, but none were acted on. When we heard about the Genesis project to uh, drill a non-potable well, for their purposes for HVAC in the emergency. We contacted Genesis, met down or sat down with them, and then indicated our wish to partner with them to upsize that non-potable well to a potable well here in the community. What that led to was to summarize the proposed project. In addition to the Genesis well, we're looking to add roughly five to seven additional well sites that would be able to provide around 12 to 16 million gallons per day of additional capacity into the Iowa Quad Cities. This would be a multi-year project looking at between 10 to 15 years from the planning horizon and implementation phase. The reason this strategy was attractive to Iowa American Water and for our customers was quite frankly, it addresses multiple factors at once. The first factor is obviously it creates a redundant water source supply, which enhances the reliability of water service as well as making sure that in the event of a catastrophic event, like a large scale contamination of the Mississippi River or flooding well above the 500 year stage or severe damage to any treatment or distribution equipment at our East River station, we would still be able to supply the community with a reliable water source. The second factor is that this project increases our available capacity in line with reasonably anticipated growth for the area. Uh, this additional available capacity would allow us to meet that water demand for years to come with the projected growth outlook for the area. And the third and final factor is that groundwater offers some attractive qualities and connections with treatment re requirements. While the Mississippi River is abundant, the makeup of the water is constantly changing, which means the way we treat the water in order to meet and exceed federal and state water quality standards has to change as well. The advantage of groundwater is it's a lot more stable, and with all things being equal, the treatment of groundwater is less expensive than the, treat the treatment that we currently have to take with the Mississippi's water. As I stated before, the timeline for this build-out 
we expect to be a 10 to 15 year run. And the location of these additional wells, we've, we've looked at many, many sites, and the, it all comes back to there are many conditions and variables that we have to consider when looking for well sites. This includes existing infrastructure, area storage capacity, area demand, as well as where it sits in the end as far as within our system as a whole. We ideally, our strategy would be to install wells at the outer ends of our system where there's high demand, high growth, and ample storage. This should have an impact on the cost of water treating that we're treating from East River Station and having to pump all the way to these outer ends of the system. As I stated previously, groundwater is typically more stable, which generally, generally makes it less expensive to treat versus surface water. So realistically, between the three factors that we considered and realistically what we can do, and it, within that 10 to 15 year horizon, that summarizes at a high level our projected groundwater well strategy. Are there any questions I can answer at this time? Yeah, I, I do have some questions. Um, um, and perhaps not of you, but um, so the, the only thing this council has had before it is a discussion of what is happening at the Genesis site. Um, this ordinance would seem to allow this to happen without further council oversight, and that concerns me. Um, um, I realize that you are not Genesis, that you are partnering with them, but um, this is a, a a very big change in how you do business. Uh, we got some details um, through the Genesis pro project of the impact on the surrounding neighborhoods, the drilling, the number of days that it's 24 hours a day. So kind of very, just honestly, kind of very disturbing things um, and concerns when it wasn't moved away from the neighborhood by some of us, um, that it wasn't moved you know, further away in an area that was close, but would be close, but didn't help. And so, that uh, certainly brings me um, to a lot of concerns about doing a blanket um, ordinance on that could happen anywhere in the city. Um, so I, if you could, if I could ask someone from staff, so this ordinance tonight, if we pass this, uh, we will, this will be able to happen anywhere in our city, whatever the zoning, is that correct? Uh, that's correct, um, subject to those distance separations that are contained in the ordinance. Okay. And we have no further say. It would never come before council again. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. I may have something else, but that's all for now, sir. Sir, if you just want to sit down right there, maybe somebody will call you up. Okay. Uh, I see. Let's see. Alderman Dorman. Thank you, Mayor Manson. Uh, and, and so I, I've been involved with the conversations with Genesis uh, through the whole process since we've been aware of it, uh, not through the whole process, but since we've been brought on board. And uh, Genesis and the water company and EMA have all been very helpful, and we've had productive meetings with the neighbors. Um, and we've, we've worked through the issues of, of the noise and um, the, the impacts that are uh, just going to happen because you're, you're drilling a well, um, which obviously comes with noise. Um, however, though, the one thing that is still very prevalent and it seems like a lot of the decisions are being made is um, the business impact that it has to Genesis, that has to Iowa American Water that um, are being factored into the projects. And when we talked about variables that you considered uh, when determining where a well should be drilled, uh, neighborhood impacts were not something listed on there. And, and that was uh, very um, easy to tell and see when the location of the Genesis well was selected. Uh, and in my eyes, there were other areas that were further away from residents that f were further away from the, the neighborhood that could have been used. But uh, the pushback we heard from both Genesis and from Iowa American was that Genesis wanted to use that for other aspects of their business and the water company would have had to run additional lines in order to connect it to their system in order to use it, which is a business input. And so that's still where my concern comes with. I know we as the city and the um, Iowa American, we have a great partnership and we've worked very well together to address other issues all throughout our community. But it's still where 
Um, I am uh, right there with Alder Woman McGinnis that this seems to be our only item that we still have left where we can control and have some say of whether a well could be in a certain location. Um, and right now, I, I think we've all, um, the neighbors uh, and everyone involved with the Genesis project has come to settle on the location is fine for us um, right now. Uh, I still would like to see some finalized drawings of what the building's going to actually look like because it is in the heart of a uh, neighborhood and it is still going to um, make or break the success of that neighborhood. If you have a industrial looking building, it will tank the neighborhood where if it's something that fits in with the characteristics, you can't tell that it's a uh, active well, uh, then it would really have no, no negative impact on the neighborhood. Um, but this ordinance is, is the only way where we as a city could have any say uh, into whether we think that's okay, whatever new location you pick, whether we think that's okay. And so um, I, I've asked Tom uh, to what the best approach would be to make some sort of um, amendment to this ordinance. And uh, since it's only first consideration, we, we still have time um, to make the uh, amendment. We don't have to do it right now. We can still talk about it in, in future readings. But my recommendation would be that we find some sort of uh, geographical uh, wording to this ordinance that locks it in just to the Genesis location. So whenever the next well uh, is to be picked and, and you guys need to go to the DNR and you have to have this ordinance in order to get that DNR permit, uh, keeping us in the loop from day one would be appreciated. But then in order to officially get that buy-in, we would have to, again, change the ordinance uh, in order to allow that. And I, I'd love to uh, hear feedback from uh, the, everyone else on council about that idea of having that location-based amendment uh, to the ordinance so we can still have some control to it without uh, trying to be um, an overbearing government. We still want you guys to be able to um, be successful here within our community. And, and we know that water is a uh, needed aspect of life, but we still uh, want to be a part of the conversation and have some say in, in what's happening so that in the future when a, the next well is being built, instead of having it be on the neighborhood side of Genesis, maybe we could have had it on the more industrial side uh, of the uh, Genesis of their property that we had and to avoid those conflicts in the future. So. Uh, that is one I'll, I'll work with, with Tom to get some language drafted uh, and get it circulated around. Um, but th that's uh, something I'd, I'd like to see with this going forward. So thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Honor. I can't support this as it reads now. You know, this first well is being done for the convenience of Genesis and probably the water company. I think everybody agrees we want to protect our great water system. And American Water is a great company. You know, just today, I watched a train pull in 250 tankers on a railroad track next to the Mississippi. You know, God help us if there was a derailment and what it would do to our water supply. So. There's definitely a need to it, but at the same time, the people that pay for the health care, that pay for their water, you know, let's uh, treat them fairly. And I think putting this first one in at Genesis without the consideration of uh, the impact of the neighborhood, I thought it was all wrong. And, uh, but as this reads, I, I can't support this, and I think you've heard from the other aldermen. You know, we got to protect the good people that live in Davenport not only with our water system, but the convenience of our, their quality of life. Thank you. Alderman Dunn. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I have some concerns too, because we started out when we had our first presentation over this, we had, they came to us and told us it was a backup well, that just a backup for Genesis. And now we're here, you know, six months later, we're up, up to seven wells. And, you know, quite honestly, when, when they give us their presentation, I had a whole bunch of questions that nobody could answer, so I had to sit here and say nothing, so, uh, or not even ask the question because I knew they wouldn't be able to answer. 
but now here we are at seven wells, and I'm just kind of curious as how 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 has how has this been rolled out to the public? Because the public's the one that's going to see these wells going in, and all of a sudden they're going to start asking a whole bunch of questions, and we're not going to be able to answer them. We're, we're as council members, are not going to be answering them, and, and our phones are the ones that, quite honestly, are going to be ringing, not Iowa Americans or Genesis. And you know, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's probably you know having a backup supply is probably a really good idea. But the way we rolled this whole thing out, I think we need to start over and, and go back and start from square one and come up with people and tell us exactly you know what what our plans are, and and what this looks like. So thanks. Thank you, Alderman Lee. Thank you, Lee. You know, I have to admit that it's not an eighth ward and I haven't paid that much attention because I agree, it was one well in somebody else's award that somebody else represents and I thought they got it. <laughs> They're working on it. Um, I, I just have a couple of questions. The well for Genesis was for non-potable water. And now we're, we're talking about, so we're talking about two different things, I think. I'm not sure. So there's one for Genesis for non-potable. And then there's a system of redundancy wells for potable water. Is that correct? It is, uh, it is the same well. So originally the well was designed by Genesis for non-potable just to run their HVAC systems. That's when we met with them to say, why drill that well to provide just that when we could partner with them to drill a potable well that then can not only provide for that, but also provide for system redundancy. So that evolved. Now the Genesis situation, I will say, we put this strategy in prior to contacting Genesis. This was a strategy we had in place. The Genesis opportunity to partner popped up because they were going to move forward with that regardless. Does and they could as question? long as they were working with DNR and meeting. So they were using potable water, a well for potable water for non-potable purposes. I don't know oh, okay. what exactly the decision making was on their end. So if I understand then, and this might be a question for staff, um, the question on this ordinance is as long as, and tell me if I'm wrong, I guess, okay? As long as a well is built a certain legal distance away from a source of potential contamination, and as long as we do not allow a potential source of contamination a certain distance from the well, then that well can go in. Is that correct? So that's what the ordinance is aimed at, and, and it's under the Safe Drinking Water Act. And it's got to be tied, like you were saying, to existing infrastructure, so you don't have to put a lot of extra pipes in. Um, so I guess one question is, Will this system, I know you're private, and I really do believe in the, um, that public, re public needs ought to be public resources, but uh, will there be a potential increase in rate with this new system? I can't say for sure, as you know, our rates are regulated by the Iowa Utilities Board. Mm -hmm. I can say that it's a significant capital investment. However, that capital investment should offer cost savings because of the reasons I outlined around the stability of groundwater. Okay. I can't say for sure, but that would be my speculation. So it sounds to me like there were a lot of factors built in on where these things can be located except for the questions about nuisance to residential areas. Is that what I'm understanding? There were a lot of factors built into this, res um, this ordinance except for that question? I think what you have is a ordinance that was put together by engineering. And of course, what they did is they looked at um, DNR information on well separation and how to protect that well and locate that well uh, from an engineering standpoint. Okay, it does sound to me then that um, having some additional factors put in with perhaps an amendment to this would be helpful so that we have some kind of ability to get brought back in if there's a concern with residential areas and have some say. That's what I'm hearing at this point. So that's what I would support. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Connor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
I was invited to and attended uh, the informational meetings, and I appreciate you bringing us to the table. And um, and then again, when you met with the public, and um, if I were to infer, what seems to have happened is 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 the uh, situation is maybe in evolved and um, the discussion that we're having now is um, slightly different than when we first came to the table. So um, w while we uh, got to meet with the neighbors and, and, and get assurances of uh, construction noise and timeline and appearances of the building, um, there's a whole other set of questions that are now on the table as we're looking at additional wells. and. Sometimes having that discussion from the dais is a little bit more clumsy than if uh, it had come up at those previous meetings. So um, to answer Alderman Dorman's question of if this is uh, something that, if your recommendation is a direction that I would like to go, yes, I think that seems appropriate. If we have um, somehow a, um, a heavy use building like a well that's able to go into just about any zoning area without um, first uh, coming to the city council. That seems like um, some verbiage that we would want to put in. And, um, and um, rather than having these discussions on the peripheral um, and, and getting assurances, it would be nice if um, we could work together to uh, draft the ordinance in a way that those assurances become guarantees uh, for the public. So. Thanks for your leadership and uh, working with Tom on that. And I look forward to watching this item evolve a little further. Thank you. Alderman McGinnis, one more time. Yes, sir. I'll, let me do it one more time. Um, I did have a couple of other things that would, that I'd require some comfort on as well. Um, Cause I, I can't, I can't vote for seven. I can't vote for seven. Tell you that I can't vote for seven all at once and anywhere. Um, but I think some questions that you might consider answering in this process, you had mentioned other Iowa cities, uh, other Quad City, Iowa Quad Cities. So I assume the seven aren't all in Davenport. So my question, when you, because you're talking about others, like, are you going to other cities to get an ordinance? And if so, which ones have you gone to? Um, what it doesn't sound like, now there was a plan to a public plan with Genesis, and that was really Genesis's plan. I understand they were doing it, and you came in. I understand that process. But what is Iowa Americans' plan to go to the public and explain this difference in their business model and how it might impact? Um, you know what what's in there because I don't think there is a public plan that I know of, except for the meetings with the the folks in the area of the Genesis neighborhood, and then. Um, Again, I think it's uh, for us very important to, um, as we get down the road with this, is the negative impact on neighborhoods. Um, I can see, um, I, you know, I understand there are probably places that these will go that have to do with topography and everything else, the aquifer. But I can see it once again, um, you know, poorer neighborhoods have cheaper land or easier targets. And if we don't control this all the way, and we just have in our zoning that this can go anywhere in our city that a company wants to put it, then that's pretty scary to me. We zone every other single thing that is in our city, I think. So, um, um, you know, we need to talk about that down the road perhaps, but I think that's important as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Or I'll make a couple. So I know a lot of times we do stuff on the, on the dais and we put on the agenda and then it evolves into other discussions, which... This is what I see here, and I apologize I missed last week. But um, so it, Tom explained, and Tom, if there's anything you missed or want to add to this particular item, but it's basically a distance separation type thing with the with the well um, storage units in the water, right? Right. Okay. Correct. Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. So here's so my background and. I'm an EMA commissioner here in Scott County, so I was one of the advocates uh, to help with um, the understanding of the Genesis project because I fully believed that a backup system for our hospital and water was needed, knowing the concerns of where it was going to go in respect to Alderman Dorman's um, ward and neighborhood. And so we engaged. They came and briefed here. They briefed, and our folks at the EMA uh, briefed the need 
briefed what it was going to be, how it was going to be, and the noise, and then there was a meeting held, as my colleague talked about, and then the neighbors were informed. And the need to have water back up for our hospital uh, was important, and thus, I think, I certainly don't speak for any of y'all, that generally there was an understanding of why this was important, why it was particular, and, and, and rectified many of the concerns, at least for the, the neighbors, particular to the Genesis project. I do not remember except a vague conversation on potential in the future, maybe there's some more wells. That's it. I'm with some of the folks here, probably most of the folks here. I do, I'm very concerned that this is just now coming with a huge expansion. Water's critical, got that, understand it, but there's gotta be a working relationship here, okay? And I don't, that, that popping this up uh, again, first consideration, that's what we do. We talk about it. I agree with Alden Condon. Sometimes we stumble through this when we're speaking at the dais. Um, but I'd encourage conversation and working with us ahead of time um, because as an EMA commissioner and, and the mayor, mm -hmm. the only discussion we've had is Genesis and the backup for water for that hospital and why that's so critical. And I think we got to the point where everybody generally supported that. Where this evolved to in that short period of time, I'm, I'm not understanding. So... Um, I, I, I would encourage the council to uh, work with Alderman Dorman and Mr. Warner to add an amendment. I think that is needed so that at least it forces the conversation. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Brian, please call the roll on first consideration. Dickman? Yes. Grip? Yes. Dorman? Yes. Lee? Yes. Ambrose? Dunn? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. And condom. Yes. Eight yes, is your honor. Roger that. So it passes to second consideration. So between now and then, for next, we need to involve, we need to get a little more conversation going. Thank you. All right. So next item is approval of all items on the consent. Second. Okay. Brian, please roll. Call. <laughs> roll with it. <laughs> Dunn. Yes. Condon. Yes. Dorman. Yes. Lee. Yes. Grip? Yes. Ambrose? McGinnis? Yes. And Dickman? Yes. Eight yes, as your honor. Consents approved. Next item is are there any other ordinances, resolution, or motions? There are none for this evening. Next item is there any public with business? There is. Please state your name, Ward. If you're not from here, I'd love to know where you're uh, from. Five Dale minutes. Gilmore, Six Ward. I have a problem that actually presents itself as an opportunity. I own some commercial property in Eldridge. I have two large blue spruce trees. These are beautiful trees. They're 25 foot tall, but they need to go. I've, I've contacted tree moving services. They can't do it. So with the Festival of Trees, if, if you'd like a big, huge tree out in front of City Hall, get a hold of me in front of the police station, in front of your church, in front of whatever. All you have to do is get with me, come out, pick the one, the one you want and cut it off. So I'll take care of the stumps, but, 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 but these are huge trees. So, yeah, please leave your name with uh, a good <laughs> and tight. There's a conversation going on that'll thanks for that. Um, so, we're, we're moving forward, we're doing this, and some of the people know what I'm talking about. So, um, big tree in the city. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any, Ms. Spiegel, anything else? Roger, there's a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Go to the Veteran Day Parade activities tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend.